Sure. Hey guys, Hunter Otis here with Tim Uchuk, Simplify to Multiply in the Perfect Week coaching program. I have Lindsay here on with me today. How you doing, Lindsay? I'm doing great. Thank you so much. AKA the Moss Boss. <laughs> 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 yeah, very excited. Um, you know, Lindsay jumped into the program back early February and I got to have that conversation with you when you jumped on board. And honestly, it was, it was a super fun call for me to talk with you. Like I told Tim afterwards, I was like, this woman is amazing. Like she's going to crawl. Oh, you're so sweet. And Thank I, I'm you. Not even kidding. Like it was such a fun, fun phone call. Like she was just ready to go and ready to get stuff done. So it was, mm -hmm. it was a pleasure talking with you at the outset, but why don't you, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? So just what's your name? What's your business? Um, and yeah, what do you do? Like what's the size of your team? And um, okay. we'll jump into a couple questions there from there. So my name is Lindsay Sher Burgess. My company is Green Wallscapes. We create preserved moss, walls, letters, logos, and art for companies all over the US and Canada. Um, so far we have done projects in over 35 states um, and most of the Canadian provinces. Um, and we um, started the business kind of by accident. Um, my husband and I were looking on Pinterest. We saw, like this was a couple of years ago, we saw um, a piece of art from Europe, I think. And we were like, oh, we can make that because we make things. And then we made one and then somebody asked us to make it for like their house. And then another person asked us to make it for their office. And then we're like, oh, this might be a thing. Um, and so far we've done projects for um, some major companies. Uh, we've done a project for Starbucks, Stella Artois, um, a couple major airlines. Um, you know, we just finished with a major sports brand, which I'm still under an NDA, so I can't say it yet. <laughs> um, and so, you know, um, Garden of Life, which is, we just finished like an amazing piece for them. Um, and so, it's just, I like to joke that the moss chose me. I did not choose the moss. Um, <laughs> <and> I, <laughs> so um, the materials, we worked with all, just to be very clear, we work with all preserved materials. So it's a no hassle application. It doesn't require, you know, consistent maintenance and watering and all that stuff. So it's a great solution specifically for people who either don't have a green thumb or for an office environment where people, they just don't need any additional maintenance. Right. Um, and then we're not like limited in terms of, what we can do with the material because we don't need to have irrigation or lighting or any of that kind of stuff. So it's really fun right. for lobbies and other things like that. Um, you know, commercial spaces. Well, and no joke, like I, I get your emails, like your Tuesday emails mm -hmm. and, and the work that you do is just, it's gorgeous. Like I, him and I both were like, we saw what you did and I, I looked at the pictures uh, on your website and I get those emails from you. And I'm just like, mm -hmm. This stuff is so cool. And it, it totally looks like it's preserved, but it totally looks lush and alive. I guess. Well, and that's really wonderful good. about these mosses. Um, and, you know, we also have started to integrate, you know, preserved ferns and actually faux succulents, right. which a lot of people think are living. Yeah. Um, and so we'll take on pretty much anything as long as somebody will pay us for it, which is probably a bad mindset, but that's just <laughs> sort of where we're at at this point. Right. Right. <laughs> But I think, you know what I mean? yeah, and it was interesting talking to you because, and we'll get into a few questions, but mm -hmm. it was interesting talking to you because what you do is so creative, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, it has your, your thumbprint on, on all of it in a way. So it's like, how do we, how do we streamline and automate something that's so like unique and creative and design oriented that says me all over it. Right. Yes. And, and that was what I came to Tim for was like, I, have been, first of all, it's not just me. I want to be very clear that I have an incredible team of artists that we have been working and refining and, and we, Green Wallscapes would not be what it is without the team that I have. Like my team right. is unbelievable. Right. Um, right. And so of course I get to be the face and I get to talk about it and I get to do these podcasts, but to be very clear, you know, I'm, at this point, not really the one who's doing the actual mossing most of the time. And my right. artists have really taken this and run with it. So, right. Um, Which is cool, right? Because now you've taken something that was so unique to you and you've been able to replicate that with the team and exactly. keep quality up and happy clients and customers, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So why don't you jump in? Tell us a little bit, like, where were you before jumping in and working with Tim? 
like just paint a picture of, of how things looked and, and why you kind of were looking for help. Uh, in, in, at the end of the year going into 2019 or 2020, sorry, and 2019 going into 2020, I was like, this is a real thing. Like I have, you know, I had, um, at that point, I think I had four, yes, I had four employees, um, mm. and we were looking to hire the fifth and, um, I didn't exactly have the right team completely in place. I had mostly the right team, um, but I could feel that there were some pieces that weren't quite working. Right. And frankly, I was just so burnt out. Like I was beyond burnt out because I just felt like we were dodging bullets. We weren't, we didn't have <laughs> systems and processes in place. We had nothing. And right. again, like I was in startup mode, like we're still in startup mode. Um, but I just didn't feel like I had the structure in place for me to take myself out of, frankly, a lot of stuff that I hated doing, like the ordering, right. um, dealing with a lot of like detail-y things, a lot of cus heavy customer service, um, you know, even after the projects had started where I was like holding on to that when I really didn't need to. Um, and so I saw Tim's like totally crappy video thing that he made right. that with a terrible graphics and whatever. Yep. <laughs> but underneath those terrible graphics was, I could tell, like a very clear, you know, systematized brain that I do not have. Mm. Um, and so, and what also resonated with me was, how do you get yourself, here are tools to get yourself out of this so you can just be doing what you want to be doing. And that was right. so like, oh my God, there's a roadmap to do this because clearly I'm not capable of making that happen. So, <laughs> um, you know, you know, you can bootstrap and you can get to a certain point, but at some point, like I was, I was maxed, I was so maxed out energetically. I was exhausted, like beyond exhausted. Right. Um, and you know, between myself and my husband, we have three businesses. So it's like, not only this, we're just like a bunch of mad people. Right. So we really felt like and I really felt like I need help with this. And I am not a systemic thinker. I'm a marketing person. And so for me, it was like, I got to figure out how to put the operations in place. So everything I'm selling gets delivered the way I want it to get delivered. And in a fashion where one, we can make money, but also two, like my team doesn't die. And three, you know, nobody's crying <laughs> and all that right. kind of stuff. <laughs> and how do we eliminate some of those issues that come up when you are, um, it moving as fast as we're moving. We're a very high volume. Uh, we are pushing our prices, but you know, we were trying to get like a really big body of work so that we had examples to show people of what was possible. Right. Um, and so anyway, the point is, you know, I was, it was chaos. And Tim was like, I have a system. This is how my system works. It's like, you know, we look at everything and I have these tools that you can use. And I think it was probably just one of those days where I looked at myself and I was like, I've got, I don't need mindset. I don't need like big growth mindset, like woo woo stuff. Right. I'm like, I need somebody to tell me what to do to get from here to here with tools and techniques. And yes, there's absolutely some mindset component, but I needed yep. that practical thing. Um, right. And Tim has delivered big time. I mean, it has been game changer for us um on a lot of levels so and i'm yeah. and, and i was telling you like i haven't even gotten through the entire program yet right yeah so why so, don't you just jump into that right because results are really the only mm -hmm. thing that matters right like you could right. just sit around and talk about mindset and oh you need to picture this and law of attraction that all you want and there's so much mm -hmm. stuff out there that focuses on that but really at the end of the day like you jumped in to get a result so why don't you tell us well, what are your results? What has changed? What do things look like now? Um, and what do you see the future looking like now as a result of, of the work that you've done so far? Um, well, first of all, for us, the big thing has been going from like chaos and like just a lot of things floating around and not feeling like we have a process mm. to like a very defined process for like, how do we get from conceptual idea or sold project into finished moss wall at someone's office or at someone's house or whatever. Yep. Um, and what I learned in one of the conversations I had with Tim was that I'm cool living in the land of ambiguity. My team is not cool with living in the land of ambiguity. <laughs> right. They don't like it when we're not 
like completely planned. They don't like it if we have to hustle and get material. They don't like it if um, there's a problem with shipping. They don't like, and those things give them a lot of stress and anxiety. They just want to be able to do a great job. Yeah. Um, so, but because I've been an entrepreneur for so long and I'm used to the chaos, you know, whatever, um, and rolling with the punches, I think that part of me like didn't want to impose too much stuff on them. But what I was holding back was like, here are coherent ways of us to get to our goals. So you feel empowered. I feel empowered in the sense that I can sell more because I know we've got the bandwidth or I know we don't have the bandwidth. Yep. Um, and so just to give you a little sense of trajectory, cause that's the question you actually asked me. Um, so we, I joined mid February. I don't know if you heard, but there is a global pandemic happening right now. <laughs> um, just in case anyone hasn't gotten that news yet. <laughs> like, no, I, I, <laughs> I'm wondering, <laughs> oh, wait, oh, no. yeah, still, still, still global pandemic. What's going on? Still going still on. Still happening. <laughs> um, and we're not social distancing enough, but that's a whole other conversation. Um, anyway, so, you know, for me, it was like, I joined, we were on fire in, in, in February, but I was also like emotionally, mentally, physically, everything on fire. I was so drained. We did like the most installations we had ever done. It was bonkers. The team was burnt out, pissed off, exhausted, and -hmm. overwhelmed. Like that was what was going on. Um, And I actually had a girl quit, like right at the end of, like right before Corona happened, actually, like where we were, you know, US went into lockdown. Right. So, which was great because it actually worked out amazingly well. I was able to keep everybody else on my team and all that kind of stuff. So then we had to like, so then like Tim basically functioned like a therapist, to be very honest with you. I don't think that we solved any real like problems in terms of our, um, in terms of like, you know, like, what are my business issues? I was just like, oh my God, what is this going to be? Oh, 2008, right. oh my God, you know, whatever, for right. a while. Um, and Tim, like, even keeled was like, okay, Linz, you've done this now for a couple of weeks. Like, yep. what can we do? Like, start thinking about your systems and processes and other things you can put into place because this is not going to be forever. Right. Um, and it was really nice to have a sounding board during that time. Um, March was still fine, you know, April was probably the worst month because what we were doing is we were like kind of retooling what we were selling, what we were offering. And we realized that, you know, even though quote unquote, we're an essential business, we could stay open the whole time. Right. Owning a moss wall is not an essential thing for people. I know that that seems like hard to believe, but it's really, <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, like eating, having a moss wall. And right. then what we saw happen was once people kind of got comfortable, like after about a month or two, they were like, I just need to buy something. So we, and then they got stimulus checks. So we were getting a lot of kind of like small and medium sized projects from people who were getting, you Mm. know, those checks. We got a couple inquiries that were like exactly $2,400 because people were getting the dual income families were getting like those checks. And they were like, this is what I want to buy with my $2,400. I guess I'm good with this. (laughs) Fantastic. Right. Um, And so, you know, we were kind of working through that. I mean, and in, in the meantime, like I'm having team, my team is very tumultuous at that point still. A um, lot of like emotional things coming up, a lot of like, what's going to happen? Are we going to stay employed? Are we not going to stay employed? Like, what's it going to be? And right. I think that there was a lot of stuff that in the beginning of March that, you know, that time could have probably been better used, but we just weren't sure what was going on. Towards right. the end of March, we started to look at systems and processes and Trello and all this stuff that Tim teaches in his programs. Um, and the team really, because we had this extra gap in terms of time and space, it's like one of the only times we've ever had where we actually have time and space to think mm. in the business or on the business instead of in the business. Right. And uh, so we put together all of these boards. We started to really brainstorm around like, well, what do we want this to look like? What do we want this to feel like? What do we, you know, how do we make money doing this, but in a way that doesn't feel totally overwhelming and that we can never keep, keep up. Right. Um, and so, um, and then there's been other tools around like financial, um, like financial modeling and other things like that that Tim's been really helpful with, like, how do we figure out actually like how much to charge for things and that kind of stuff. Um, yep. Cause I've been kind of like 
throwing m- numbers around and like the bank account goes up. So I'm like, oh yeah, we're making money. But then like, there's other things that I'm just like not accounting for like taxes and other stuff like that. Right. <laughs> so, right. um, so like I said, we're a work in progress. What I really, what has really resonated though, is that like, now I look at my team and I think we have all of these systems in place. The girls absolutely love the Trello. They love it, whether it's Trello, Austin and Monday.com, any of those things. Um, and they love that. And, and what I really loved is that Tim even like set the boards up for us. Like it wasn't like I had to invent the board. Right. Um, and I know that that seems like something really basic, but for us, it was like a total game changer. And mm. also the mindset of like thinking in one week spurts, like what do we have to accomplish this week? Like what do we have to accomplish long-term, but then how do we right. break it down so we can actually get there? Um, you know, how do we get to, you know, our financial goals? How do we get to our operational goals? And, and what I've noticed with my team is that we aren't, even though we're getting really busy again, I mean, August and September are going to be some of the busiest months that we've probably ever had in the history of the business. Yeah. The difference is the way we are going into those with like, okay, how are we going to prepare so that it isn't completely overwhelming and it's not going to like decimate my team. Do you know what I mean? In terms of like chaos or problems or whatever. Um, and so I think the biggest thing has been that shift in mindset. Like, how are we going to get from here to here? How is everyone on the team going to be, feel successful? Um, and know that they're keeping pace and all that kind of stuff without feeling like, Oh, what's going to happen. It's not to say that things don't happen. Things happen constantly. UPS loses a project, you know, like it's the story of my life, you know, whatever, you know, and, and that's the thing is at least I can take some of that chaos away from my team that does not do well when they're yeah. not thriving in their jobs. And so like, right. there's just been a lot of those kinds of operational things that I've gained a lot of awareness around that have been instrumental in my own stress level and also in my team. It's also really helped me. And I'm sorry, I'm like talking so much, but- No, um, you're fine. Keep going. You know, when, when Tim talks about ownership mindset, and distributed like leadership and distributed decision-making. For me, what I'm seeing is that works super well with the right people. And yeah. what I've empowered my team to do is come with how, how they, what they want to pursue and what they're interested in, mm. and then let them have ownership and leadership over that one. So for example, one of the girls who's just my, like a production person, she was part, initially part-time and then actually started working full-time with us during the pandemic. Um, she, um, she's like started to take on like all the calculating how much it costs for us to actually make everything. And mm-hmm. she like did her own spreadsheet. She, you know, we worked through like how much do all these little things cost. She came up with like different ideas in terms of like, well, how do we make this more efficient or how do we, you know, or really it's, you know, there's 10, 10 hours a week that the, the girls are not pr- doing like money generating things. They're doing like ordering or cleaning or other things. And like, we, how do we calculate for that? And like, so she's looking at all the financial stuff. I did not ask her to do that. I did not ask her, but I have said to them, like, if there's something you want to do, if there's something that you feel that you want to be empowered in, go for it. And they've stepped up big time. And, you know, one of them has taken over the ordering and that has been unbelievable for me. And it's funny because now they understand what I was going through with these vendors and they're like, oh my God, Lens. Right. Like, (laughs) I'm like, you weren't ready before, but you said you wanted more responsibility. You wanted more money. You wanted more opportunity. Here you go. Like, and, but that's also freed me up to be able to like sell more and do more and focus on what I like doing and what I'm actually good at. Right. Uh, When I think what's interesting is like with what you said, you know, the team does not do well with ambiguity, right? Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of times the reason why that ambiguity is there is because you're doing so many things, like you don't even have the time or the bandwidth to make what they're doing even more clear, right? And to give them the proper instructions and things like that. And so it's kind of like a a two-sided thing. It's like, yes, you know, give them more clarity so that they can be more autonomous and don't have to ask you a million questions all the time, right? Because they don't have that clarity and which eats up a ton of your time, right? But then it's also looking at what's on your plate and being able to clear some of those things up so that you have the bandwidth to give them more clarity. And it sounds like you've just been really starting to do a really good job of doing that. 
right? So, and then I think too, it's like, instead of being a micromanaging like dictator, telling your team what to do all the time, mm-hmm. allowing them to really feel like, hey, my role here matters. Like I'm, an, and, and I have empowerment to, to do something meaningful, to show what I've got, right? Mm-hmm. And to rise to the challenge and, and see what I'm capable of. Right, and provide that real value here. And that just, that brings a whole different level of fulfillment, but it's so cool that you're able to see that, like see your team really rise to the occasion and, and take things and on and do a really good job. Not every employee is going to be that way. Like if you have, right. I mean, I have a small organization. I have four employees. We're hiring a fifth one right now. Right. Um, we're probably going to be, I mean, if we get a couple of these big monster projects that we have kind of quotes out on, then I'll hire a seventh person or sixth right. person. Um, but you know, I, and I like things kind of small and intimate where I can like know everything that's going on and this and that, but like not being in the minutia day in and day out and not being like, Ooh, well, what are we going to do? That kind of thing. And also sort of training the team on like how I want things done and then right. them sort of taking ownership. It's a very specific kind of person that is okay with the bandwidth that this job requires. Right. Um, because we've gone through lots of people. I mean, we've gone through people who are like, oh, I love Moss. It's so great. Like, how fun to glue all day long. And then, you know, they come <laughs> in and they're like, okay, I've been doing this. I hate this. Like, this is not what I want to be doing. Like, the pace right. is too fast. Right. The demands are too, there's too many, like, here, 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 here. Like, it's a person, a specific personality type that is okay with, um, amb- like, a lot of fast pace that is okay with like, they have to make their own decisions and I'm not necessarily going to, and then the ramifications of if that decision does not play out. Um, and so, but what I have seen is that my girls have, the ones who have stayed have risen and the ones who have not don't. Um, and they just, it just, they fade out naturally and it's just been really great. And my team is super solid right now. So we're in this kind of weird phase where we're like, looking for new people. We have two amazing candidates. We're trying to decide mm. between like which candidate to go with. Right. And um, I think about it, I'm like, God, what a great position to be in. Like we've had like previous iterations where it was like, there was no one good. No one was available. Right. Like everything was a disaster. And now it's like all these amazing people have been like let go because of whatever's happening. Mm-hmm. Um, so we have the opposite problem, which is it's a great time to hire. I wish I could hire more people. Um, right. You know, Cause it's really, you know, but again, I have to be conscious of what happens if things slow down again, like, you know, I want to start and stop, but I don't want to overdo it. So, but like I said, Tim is giving a lot of those tools in terms of like, what does that look like? You bring another person on, like how much more, um, do you need to sell? How much more do you need to think of like all of those kinds of things? Are there other things that they can do? So if it does slow down a little bit, what does that look like? Yeah. Um, you know, because we don't have any strategically moving those chess pieces. Right. So that right. Financially, it makes sense. The roles make Mm -hmm. sense. So clarifying those roles and making sure that you're bringing on the right person and what's their personality like, is it the right fit for that role? And like, these are all the things that, you know, a lot of times when we hire, we just think I need a person and Mm -hmm. early on. And this was my experience too. It's like you hire somebody because you just, I need a body and you just assume that it's going to work out fine. But then you realize, holy crap, this person is not the right fit at all. Right. You know? Yeah. And then you have to go through the pain of that, you know, and it can be, you know, we're, we, we want to be good, treat our people good. You don't want to fire people and do all this stuff. And mm-hmm. it just creates so much difficulty. So what, what's been your experience like that? Like with, because I remember you posting something about you put a job posting out there and you got like dozens of people applying and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. So no. So like our recent, typically we get between like 75 and hundred people that apply like within days. Right. This, you know, and, and like when they start, they start at the lowest level. Yeah. Um, this round I had people with master's degrees. I had people with, you know, <laughs> art degrees who just graduated were incredibly talented. Mm. Um, you know, people with a lot of different skill sets and then you kind of see like what shows up. I mean, that's part of it. Um, but a lot of the things that I've been refining also too, are like the questions I'm asking these different applicants, because you find out a lot of stuff about the applicants during the process on top of the fact that, you know, we started to implement, um, uh, Myers-Briggs and the DISC tests Mm. 
before, mm-hmm. which isn't, it sounds crazy, but you know, you're going to be with these people a lot. And if you have a small company yeah. like ours, one person can make it or break it. Um, and what I have found is that, and my team is all very sensitive. We're all artists, right? Like even me, I like come from a background, right. like just drawing for hours and imagining like what, you know, whatever. I wanted to be a fashion designer when I was a child. And so now I've designed Moss. It's fine. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> I don't even really design it anymore to be very honest with you, but I sort of like, you know, right. help guide them in certain directions. Um, but what I've seen is, is that you can really start to get a sense of people and we do like now we do like a three prong interview process which sounds totally insane but what i found is that like first of all people are willing to stick with you through three rounds of interviews including the last round where we actually have them come in and do like a little trial and figure out who's a better fit culturally but those things what you what you find in those processes is one how your team like looks at people and and that kind of thing and i said i always say to the girls like you're gonna have to spend all the time with this person so you got to make sure that like this is somebody who like feels good and all that kind of stuff, but, but you don't really know who they are for a few months, but if they're starting to do certain things that are like very red flaggy, we had one girl come in last week and I asked her like a question that Tim told me, which was, um, you know, where do you see yourself in a year? Like in your dream life, you're having coffee with yourself, where do you see yourself in a year? Right. And all she talked about was like how she wanted to have a super successful um, cartoon. She, she does like these amazing cartoons, like these Japanese manga cartoons, and she draws them and illustrates them and does all the things and like what she's amazing, super right. talented. Um, and all she could talk about was like how she wanted that to really take off. Right. And in my mind, I thought she's not going to work here. And it's not because she's not an insanely talented artist. It's because right. she does not even thinking remotely about being here in a year. She wants to do this for six months, make yep. enough money until the virus is over, and then go on with her thing and I, you know it takes a long time for people to get ramped up in our business you don't walk in and know how to moss so yep. that's been um like the biggest thing that we've you know found you know like are what are things that you like to do that you don't like to do and people you know depending on the answers that they give you get a lot of sense of like who they are what their goals are you know what they're how long are they going to be with you and if you don't really care yep. if you're a churn and burn kind of situation none of this stuff is relevant to you but we don't churn and burn which is why our work looks the way it does right we're also not cheap so you know it drives me crazy people will call us and be like well why is it so expensive and i'm like because i play american artists living wages to do beautiful work for you that they hand make in a studio in america if right. you want chinese children to make you something fine like right. it'll be 12 it'll be less expensive but you're right. gonna also feel their pain and suffering so right. knock yourself out. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, well, and I think you're hitting, you're hitting something really important, right? It's like, it's one thing to get applicants and it's another thing to properly vet those applicants and select and just have the skill set, honestly, mm-hmm. to be able to select the right fit for your team. Somebody that's going to really help you elevate your business because we're not looking, you're looking for an employee, not a body, you know? Yes. And right. I don't care if you're making moss or if you uh, have a painting company or whatever, if you're digging ditches, like you need somebody that's committed, that's going to do things right and be willing to follow the, the system, the structure, the culture, and actually contribute, you know, at least not be a negative to that culture and that structure. Right. Yeah. And, and, and it takes, it doesn't matter what you're doing. It takes a certain amount of time. It takes a certain personality and it's just to get the people where you need them to be. Yeah. It doesn't matter. And if you save $2 on somebody, but they're not as good as that other person, then it's not really a better choice necessarily because they're right. going to drive you so insane that that $2,000 or $5,000 or $10,000 you're saving over the year, you're going to lose in some sort of thing that's going to drain your energy. So it's also yeah. thinking like holistically, like, can this person put their pants on? Do they show up on time? Are they presentable? All of those kinds of things that, you know, make a huge difference. And so why don't you so, jump in? Tell me something that you were doing before that you're no longer doing now. Like 50,000 things, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I would say before, so we, we had all of our, like, so whenever we get an order, we like put them on these like stupid pieces of paper 
And then there was like 5,000 things that the girls needed me to fill out to like get all the information. But I like really wasn't that good at filling out the pieces of paper and then like stuff wouldn't get saved properly and it wasn't getting put in the right place. And then we were like losing the schedule and all this kind of stuff. And so I would say that probably the biggest thing has been shifting all of that online Mm. um, and into uh, Trello and then coming up with templates that work really, really well. The girls have like little triangles that they put next to the things that they need me to fill out. So Mm. that like literally I'm just scrolling down, I fill those things out and then other things, um, you know, I don't, I don't need to fill them out. It's just part of our, like, we've actually outlined the entire process so that they can like, like, uh, click the whole process and be like, okay, that's done. That's done. That's done. This is not done, et cetera. Right. Um, and so it goes, you know, it's been really, really helpful both for me and for the entire team in terms of like, this is how, you know, we do our process to get it going. Um, it's been, it's been unbelievable. Um, and then the best part is like at the end, when we finish a project, either by clicking all the things or just moving it over to like the done pile, um, the team gets a little smiley face and they like live for the smiley face. (laughs) They love the smiley face. And it was so funny because, you know, the way that Tim sets up the Trello boards, there's like done. And then there's like done last week. And there's a reason that's that way. I don't know what it is, but there's a reason it's that way. And I think it's probably so you can easily find those cards or whatever. And they had tried to like simplify our boards because we ended up with like a lot of things. And, uh, and I said to the girls, don't do that. You know, like, don't do the, don't like get rid of one of the extra duns because there's a reason that it's there. So we had to put it back. And then the smiley face thing went away and they were so upset about the smiley face thing for like a week (laughs) until I put it back on. And like, they even started putting their own smiley faces. Like we finished, you know, that kind of thing. And game playing the thing is very satisfying for them. And plus it's like that little hint of like, I accomplished something, I finished something, it's done. Yes. It's not, there's, there's, it's removing that ambiguity. And then translating that into other spreadsheets and other you know, key performance indicators and all that kind of stuff, which we're still integrating because we're so small that sometimes like we get really bogged down by some of the KPI stuff, which if you have a bigger team makes a lot of sense. But for us, sure. it's like sort of makes sense and sort of doesn't all the time. Right. Um, but, you know, sort of tailoring these things so like it makes sense and we're able to really take ourselves um, to the next level um, and not be afraid of like when we're in a scenario like we are, we're hiring, right? And when you take on somebody new, it's a big responsibility. And that's the way that I look at it is like, this is somebody's livelihood. And of course they can quit anytime. Of course they can go work somewhere, somewhere else. But I don't look at it that way. I look at it like they're joining my family and I'm going to spend a ton of time with these people and they start giving (laughs) an attitude and they start being a negative vibe. Like this is not going to work. Right. Um, And so that's why we go through such an intensive process, but that's also why like we approach things in a different way. And I think that's also a mindset thing. Like not everybody has that. Some people are just like, I need a guy who can paint some things or I need a guy who can like use a wrench or whatever for our specialized thing. That's really not the case. Yep. So. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's, again, that's really important, right? Finding, but then vetting and hiring the right person for the right fit, the right position, the Mm -hmm. right personality. I mean, depending on the size of your business, like these are all things that have to be factored in and you need something to follow to be able to do that properly. Like we're human too. Mm -hmm. We're fallible. We don't always know our head from the hole in the ground. Like just because we're a business owner does not mean we have it together. Right. No, so, no, so having no. something for us to follow that keeps us in check, right? And that comes to hiring, it comes to everything, right? Because the, the reality is that, yeah, there's a million things you could be doing as an owner, but right. Right. That's, that's what you were doing before, right? And it was, right. your hair was on fire and you're just yeah. freaking out. Yeah. And I mean, I had like, I mean, it was so bad. I'd like gained a bunch of weight and I was just like foggy all the time and just like totally overwhelmed by like everything that was coming our direction because also I wasn't like getting rid of all the things that I hate doing that by the way, my team loves doing like, that's the other thing too. They actually don't mind it. Like for them, that's great. Right. Like they hate selling things. Sign me up. You want me to talk to people all day long? I love it. You know, right. you want me to tell you about like the most awesome experience that you're ever going to have in your life. I am your person. <laughs> right. But you know, if it's, if it's a scenario where I have to then like go and do a bunch of administrative stuff, 
it's very unpleasant for me. It's right. Very, very unpleasant for me. Right. And that's the power of working with a team, right? Is because you would think that there are things that you despise. You think no one's going to like doing this, but it's totally not true. Like it's I would totally hate, I would hate true. being an accountant and doing taxes. All day. Right. Some people just love that stuff. <laughs> it's like the most favorite thing in the whole world. Like my tax guy, I sit down with him and after we're done, he's like, oh my gosh, that was so much fun. I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm like, yeah, it's cool because I got, I got some money back. But if I had to pay you right now, I'd be upset. You know, and, right. and he's all happy. Like this is the greatest day of his life just because he got to do my taxes. Exactly. But that's the reality. You can find people like that. And if you think you got to do everything, you're totally wrong. Mm -hmm. Like there are things that you hate that other people would love to do and they would love to get paid to do it. You know, and they do a and great job. Better. And they're so much better at it. Exactly. I mean, my team is insanely talented at a lot of things that I can't do. Like, I just right. can't. And they're, like, last week they were doing a project, this logo project. It had, like, something like 13 or 14 colors in it. It was just bonkers. And she sat there for 33 hours. The piece was, like, probably, thir like, three by three or three by three and a half. She sat there for 30 hours and like did the individual pieces. It yeah. was mind blowing. You know, like she did an ombre that was like this big. It was like microscopic. And so for me, it's like, I could never do that. But for her, it was yeah. like, she loves that stuff. She loves being in that flow, doing that thing, coming yeah. up with like, how do I get that to work? And it's not something you can teach. It's just something that's like inherent in who they are. Yeah. Tell me about, tell me about accountability. Like what, how did you hold, what was accountability like before jumping in and what does your accountability of your team look like now? Like how do you hold them accountable and measure and, and the reporting and like keep them on pace and on point with what they need to do? Um, so at the beginning of the week, every week we sit down, we're like, okay, what do we think we can get done this week? And we put it all in like the, this is what we're doing this week pile. Um, and then at the end of the week, we sort of say like, did we get everything from that pile into the done pile? It's not really much more complicated than that. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, if we didn't do it, what happened? And my old response would have been like, we need to hurry up and do it. Right. And I don't know if it's just because of like sort of the chaos of the pandemic and because of, you know, I, maybe I've given up some sort of like, like need to control every single thing. Mm -hmm. But if they don't make it, no one is going to die if they don't have their moss. They think they are, but there's no such thing as a moss emergency realistically if they don't get if they get it between friday and monday it will still be fine um yeah. if we're weeks and weeks late that's a different story but that doesn't happen like rarely do we run into a situation where we're really behind on something rarely i would say probably out of 300 projects that we've done in the last two years um we've had like a couple where it's just been like it's just extended too long and then because of that we've actually done extra stuff for clients just to say i'm sorry it took a little bit longer just something unanticipated happened. So, um, and typically like people are cool with that. You know what I mean? So, right. um, and it's just been, and, and so like, I don't know if I've loosened up, but I think also the, the team, because they've been more empowered has stepped up. Um, and we just have like, we now understand like what the flow is, what's really realistic to accomplish and what's really not realistic to accomplish because there's also that, you know? Um, and then I'm always pushing them. I'm always like, can we do this faster? Can we do this faster? Can we do this faster? And sometimes the answer is yes. And sometimes the answer is like, please Liz, <laughs> we need a couple more days. Like this is just, you know, yep. it just, we can't do it this fast because something came up or because, you know, there's just things that happen all the time. So we're, we're always refining, figuring out how long it takes to do all this stuff and then go from there. Right. And so I would say my response my response to us being behind is very different than it used to be. And they're, because they've all, they've stepped up more and I've also calmed down. It used to be just like, I would go in and like blow up and get super upset. Yep. Um, and you know, and now I'm just like, okay, well, we've got to just figure out like how to do this faster or what can we do the next time so that we're not, we're able to meet the expectation as right. opposed to going in with the mindset like, well, this isn't done right. And da, 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 da. especially right. now because clients, I mean, we've been through some really interesting stuff with clients recently where they've like approved projects, gotten projects, and then been unhappy about something. And then we've had to like scramble to make stuff happen. Mm -hmm. And so we are like hyper communicating with clients. Like we never did that before a lot of that stuff. And, and I've empowered my girls to also like take that on. That used to be something that I would spend a lot of time on. I don't do that anymore. Like they talk directly with the client now. Right. Um, and so 
and they seem to be doing a great job with it, to be very honest with you. And I think part of me was like initially like, well, I've got to control this whole thing. I've got to control the project from any communications yep. goes through me. Right. And that's very limited. And on frankly, then it creates the telephone and then something gets lost in translation. And there's no need to do that. If you have trustworthy, great people who are going to stay with you for a long time, you want to empower them to say like, go for it. Yes. Uh, and they rise or they don't. They rise well, or they quit. When you described like the exact, the exact outcome of like when you have a more empowered team, you are able to calm down, right? Right. People right. don't realize like we're just so used to being go, go, go all the time as entrepreneurs. We don't realize how flipping stressed out we actually are, you know? And that stress like totally impacts everybody. And when you have an empowered team, like that's, that's the outcome that, that we're looking for to help you get is, oh my gosh, I feel calmer. Like yeah. there's, still, there's still problems, like there's still things to fix and it's always a work in progress, but I'm calmer. Like, and we can handle this and my team is stepping up. I'm not doing half, I don't have to do everything myself anymore. And it's I used to get this like intense pit in my stomach, like, <gasps> what's it going to, you know, like, oh my, you know, cause it's just going to add another thing that I frankly didn't really like handling and dealing with. And it's yeah. not to say that I like, never get in the conversation with clients or I never, right. cause sometimes like the client will, you know, take an inch and run a mile with one of my girls and my girls are like the sweetest thing in the world. So of course they're like, oh, okay, whatever you want. And then sometimes yeah. I have to like step in and reel it in and moss boss it a little bit. Like, okay, you didn't pay for that. So yeah. we're going to do this and then that's it. Then you have to start paying for any additional modifications. Right. Peak Corona, we had, well, peak quarantine. We had um, a woman who, who made us change. She had 14 versions of changes and oh my goodness <laughs> yeah and some like around option 10 i said or email group number 10 i said all right here's the deal you're anything any email it's a hundred dollars an hour and then like i think one or two more and then she was done but i mean this could have gone on forever and ever and ever but like that's where i can step in you know, sort of add a la layer of things, but most of the time, like the clients are just happy and they're like super excited and whatever. And then they, you know, keep going. And then there are certain clients where I'm like, you know, you can tell very quickly on the phone, like, is this going to be an easy client? Is this going to be a difficult client? Difficult clients, if I can identify early that they're going to be difficult, they get charged extra because I know there's a pain, pain in the ass fee that's going to come later down the road. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Um, so be nice to me. If you call me, be nice to me. It's amazing, like what you'll get. Um, but yeah, no. What's well, the just, boundaries yeah. and expectations, right? Like mm -hmm. we one, we have to have boundaries with ourselves mm -hmm. and what we do. Like that's a lot. Honestly, a lot of creating systems. It's about creating boundaries. It's about creating mm -hmm. walls and doorways and pathways that mm -hmm. we can stay on and follow, right? And that also keep us on that path. So as owners, exactly. yes. But then two for our people, and then three for our clients. Mm -hmm. Right. Because our clients are, are oftentimes where the fires are coming up. Right. Right. So if we don't have clear processes and procedures on how to handle each, like that situation that you just described, right. Mm -hmm. Then every single time we're going to handle it differently. And every single time it's going to light a big fire. And then we're going to let people walk all over us. And a lot of it's just being able to have that structure to be able to stand in our authority and allow our people to stand in their authority and own their role of responsibility. And so that our clients can obviously know what, results to expect and then see that we deliver on that and, and like what the time frames are and you know we're we're right. really hyper communicative with our clients so like if there is a delay that's not due to us like there's a material issue or you know there's a shipping issue like we do everything from our end to you know for example we had a client it's a new client incredibly kind person um and ups basically ended up and i, I sort of knocked myself out of here sorry um, UPS ended up, we, sh we sent it, they delivered one of the two packages. Um, and the client called and was like, Linz, can you call them and try and figure out if they can deliver today? Cause I've got to go do the, the install was supposed to be today. Anyway, they just delivered. I just got a, a thing that they actually delivered the piece. Thank God. I hope it's a, an okay situation, but it's late. I mean, we did everything from our end to make sure that it was going to be delivered on time. Right. You know, and, and so how you approach problems is you do everything you can. Right. And then at some point you have to just sort of say like, all right, I did it. Yep. Like I did everything I could. I cannot make UPS go any faster. 
<laughs> I can't, I can't right. make them do things they're not going to do. Um, and so, you know, you just, and you roll with those punches. What I did say to the client was, you know, we're happy to be, we're super happy to be there to like support you during the installation of this other piece. You probably are going to have to do with a maintenance guy, not your professional installer. I'm really sorry about this, but right. we will be available, you know, to, to do that. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, it's about being able to solve problems and solve them effectively, efficiently, very quickly with less stress and less time. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Then for you, like what's been, what's been your favorite part of this whole thing? Like working with Tim, what's, what's the favorite part of this, the perfect week program for you? Tim? Just Tim. <laughs> Tim's yeah. my favorite part. Yeah. Um, no, I, I would say Tim and then the results. Um, you know, feeling more calm, feeling more empowered, feeling um, that we're putting systems in place that I can teach to anyone who comes in the door, mm. um, feeling like there is some control and in the chaos um, and that anything, you know, that new things are possible because I have these systems in place that I don't think that I, you know, because I, I am starting to create more bandwidth for myself, right. there's now new possibilities of what can be created that weren't in my mindset before because I was just so in the weeds. Um, so taking right. myself a little bit out of the weeds, I mean, I'm not completely out of the weeds, let's be real, um, but I am, you know, someone who um, feels a lot more empowered, a lot like calmer. And then, you know, like I said, it's just so nice to have a resource that has been where you want to, like he is where I want to go. Mm. Um, and so I knew that, you know, someone said like, don't ask people who have never been where you're going, where to go. And I love that because I think that that's really true. So when Tim was like, I have these couple of businesses and you know, they have different, you know, one's eight figures, one's seven and one's like whatever, six. Um, and I, I still live in the six figure club. I don't live in the seven figure club yet. Um, but I can tell you how to put systems in place so that you can get there and not feel overwhelmed and feel right. like you're, you know, thinking strategically about this. That was very interesting to me. And mm -hmm. even though the graphics were horrendous and I'm going to like make fun of him forever about yeah. that, I knew that the systems and the underlying material was going to be a game changer for us and legitimately yep. it has been. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. That's one of big Tim's biggest things, right? Is progress over perfection. Mm -hmm. And it's fascinating to see, like sometimes we have this ideal of it needs to be perfect in order for us to be able to move forward. And you know, like his crappy little artwork video, like there's a reason why it's still there because for whatever reason it, it works. It resonates right. with people, right? And that, mm -hmm. that's a huge, a huge lesson learned because he's tried to change it like four or five times. And every time, every time he changes it, it it's just, there's something about that. It's, it's gotta, it's gotta be real, you know, mm -hmm. right. and you're with any business, like your clients are going to pick up on things that aren't authentic and aren't real. And they're going to pick up on chaos and disorder. And if you mm -hmm. don't know what you're doing and if that chaos is totally there, like they're going to see through that. Right. And right. it's going to create tons of problems. And then your employees are going to see through that. They're not going to have the trust in, in you. They're not going to show up. They're going to, you know, do half-assed work because mm -hmm. they don't feel confident and it doesn't matter as much to them. But when exactly. they see that, you know, progress is consistent and they know what to expect, things totally start to change. So it's kind of cool to see. But for you, I guess, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, I was yeah. Just gonna say, like, you start to be like a little company that's working with like some of these major brands, you know, these national companies and things like that. You know, right. we did a project for Walmart's corporate offices. I think like within like the first couple of months, like somehow they found us. I don't even know how they found us, but like mm. they called us and was like, can you do some lettering for us for one of our things? You know, like, right. and I think they even had other Moss vendors. It was like a whole random thing. And I was like, this is crazy. You know, here I am like doing this out of my backyard at that point. You know, right. now we have like a studio and all that kind of stuff, but Right. It's been a really amazing process. Like these huge companies are, and, and then to be able to find people who would help us like elevate and elevate and elevate and elevate. It's just been unbelievable. It's been really right. cool. Um, and so, you know, it's great to also just come and be like, okay, this is the scenario I'm in. How do I fix this? Um, how do I make this better? And that kind of thing. And, and usually Tim has some like really sage advice just from having been through those same experiences. Right. Right. And so for you, like, what would you say, because like you said, before we hit record, right, is not everybody's just like, yeah, sign me up. Here's my credit card. You know, 
not everybody's super gung ho like that. Like, and, and understandably so there's a lot of crap out there and there's a lot of coaches, consultants that do not deliver what they say they're going to deliver. So like, what would you say to somebody that's on the fence? That's not sure if this is right for them and, and what have you. I think you have to take a long, hard look at what you want. Um, you know, if you want to be, if you feel like the way I was feeling, which is stressed, overwhelmed, exhausted, um, not really having fun. I mean, I was really not having fun before mm. this happened, uh, before I started working with him and also with Corona and everything. Um, and I also felt like I know there's something I'm missing. I know that there's like a system I'm missing. I know that there's, and I probably could have figured it out eventually, but I needed something that was going to like fast track and get this done. I also knew that like, if I were to hire a COO or I was to hire someone who would be like a manager, that's a lot more expensive than having a coach that teaches you how to like structure this stuff. And that was really like part of my decision-making process. Um, and, and, you know, right now we have kind of a unique opportunity in the sense that like, there's for some people there's a, an opening that they never have which is time that they never have to put processes and plans and things right. in place um uh, and that's what we did we we took you know tim's systems and we started putting them in place and now i know that we're gonna be able to like elevate it to the next level because we can just add more things into the system and into the machine as opposed to like having to reinvent the wheel or feel overwhelmed or feel like we're starting right. to get like a handle on what all these things are. Right. So it is a lot of money. I know it's not free. I know that it is not, but I would have to say it's probably the best investment I've made this year. It's really cute. Cause sometimes like the girls will be like, well, why don't you just ask Tim what to do? Like, if we don't know what to do, <laughs> just ask Tim, he knows. And like, I come back and they're like, that's amazing. Um, and <laughs> so I do think about it that way too. It's like, you know, yes, you, of course, could hire somebody who knows how to do these systems and processes, but that's an expensive person to have. This is some way of like sort of outsourcing that. And then just like the very practical tools. Like I didn't, like I said, I have a big mindset, obviously. Like I just make stuff up and then invent businesses and do that kind of thing. Yep. But for me, it was like, I needed that on the ground, really structural, really um, like palpable action steps that were easy also because we don't have time for hard and I really liked that yeah. his thing was like it's easy it's simple it's like we're trying to take away the problems and the difficulty so that it's very straightforward to do this process right and even things like scheduling clients and like all that stuff it was one one day where I think I had like seven or eight Calendly things where I just sent like my my little um email saying like schedule with me and they were all like in a row and I was like that's amazing. That would have been probably five hours of emailing back and forth and waiting and will it work at my schedule and, da, 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 da. and those kinds of things you just don't even think about until you're yeah. doing it. Um, right. And I think a client recently where like, they just didn't, couldn't figure it out. I think I was that person also too with you. It might've been Hunter that I was like, I don't know about this Calendly thing, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> um, now what I find is that it works incredibly well. Um, and people, it's just right. resonating super well. They're like, okay, great. I'll just put myself in and then we'll talk tomorrow or whatever. So it's, um, and it's it about time, me. right? So, so kind of what you're saying, yeah. as you come in and you started, you didn't have any time. Right. And so somebody ha takes the time, which is kind of miraculous, to get on a phone call with us. And then it's just important to remember that, yeah, the work that you're going to be doing with us is to reclaim time so you have more bandwidth. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's a big maybe misconception is it's like, oh, this stuff is really hard for me. So it must be some like full-on college course that I'm going to have to do to be able to reclaim time and make the shift. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of people will jump, sometimes like people jump that jump in, they decide to jump into the program and they say, you know, they kind of just disappear. And then a month goes by and they're like, I don't think this is the right fit. And it's like, well, have you done anything? No, I don't have time. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, that's what we're experts at helping you get back is your time. It does require a little bit of work, but I think like what, with what you've shared on, on our conversation here so far today is it's like, it's those little things that add up that create that snowball effect. You, yeah, so you, exactly. the Calendly thing, capturing one process that makes things a little bit better today and then doing that again tomorrow and the day after and the day after, all of a sudden a couple months go by and it's like, oh my gosh, I'm happy. What happened? Like, <laughs> I'm happy. We've re we reduce ambiguity. Yeah. There's not, we're not, 
we're not like, oh, what's going to happen yeah. next? It's like, okay, we, we know what the plan is kind of. And, yeah. and I know we have, a, I mean, like I said, I still have three more of these lessons to go through. It's just, I haven't right. had time for it. Um, but what I have found is that um, for us, even having not gone and finished that whole thing, it's been just a total game changer. And um, like I said, Tim has been great also too about being like, well, that's in week, blah, blah, blah. And you're not there yet. So you need to just <laughs> go through my process. But he's also just incredibly kind in terms of being like, okay, well, this is how you do it. Right. Some people, you know, I, I'm on a lot of the coaching calls, which I would definitely recommend being on because not even, even if you're not the ones asking questions, like usually you're like, oh, well, that would be really useful in my business or whatever. Right. Um, there's a lot of really good information that it's probably a lot of the same stuff that Tim's saying week after week in terms of like, because the problems are always the same because the underlying fundamental structures of business are the same. It's yep. just what you stick on top of it, what you're selling, what you're, but it's still people finance, uh, you yep. know, the other little body part things that he talks about right. um, and sales and marketing and all that kind of stuff. And then like what you do with that, you know, makes, makes a difference. And then yeah. you know, for someone like me, I always am looking at like, what's the next opportunity, what's possible. Like, you know, it could be that I get green wallscapes to a point where I really am not involved at very much at all. in like the day-to-day -day stuff, yeah. I get a sales person, I get a this, I get a that. And then, you know, I get someone who just sort of handles like a lot of the administrative stuff. And then, you know, of course I can help and that kind of thing. And then I could start the next thing, but I know that the structure is correct. And learning yep. that structure is huge um, because you can either find it out intuitively and make a ton of mistakes, or you can just have someone tell you like, this is the recipe, do this recipe. It's going to save you a million hours, right? you know, whatever. Um, so it's some of the best money I've probably ever spent on my business. Um, and I remember like, I think it was like the second or third payment. It was like, I was like, oh, like in April or something. And I was like, oh my God, I have yeah. no money. And I was like, oh, like, ah. right. <laughs> and then I was like, you know what, Lens? This will not, this is not forever. Like, it's gonna be fine. And, you know, like I said, Tim was unbelievable. Like you know what, this is new for everybody. We're going to work through it. Da, 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 da. And it was just really right. nice to have a sounding board um, there during that point. And then like sort of that sounding board then saying, okay, great. You've, you've done your thing. You've bitched, you've freaked out, like all this kind of stuff. Now it's time to like start implementing some of these tools <laughs> because you're going to see that even when this comes up again, or if there's something else that comes up, you yeah. have tools that will help you get through it. Right. Um, and it unlocks and it's just made it so much better. And the girls are so, I mean, the most important thing to me is that my team is really happy. And we're always improving. We're always improving. And they love that. And they love that, like, the way that we're, approach we're approaching improvement is so different than the way that it used to be, like, kind of, like, really beaten. I'm like, oh, girl, like, that's not right. Uh, uh, uh. And now it's like, yeah. okay, well, we can do that. That didn't really quite work. What could we have done right. better? How right. do we, you know? Um, and of course you don't want to bring like too much PTSD from like a certain client interaction or something like that, but there are certain like small things that you can do. Like now we used to just like ship stuff. Now we always send a picture. We always get approval by a client before they send it. So they can't come back to us and say, Hey, I don't like that or whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, so we do a lot of new things that we weren't doing before. We put these yeah. different practices in place and we have check marks and checks and balances and all the stuff that we didn't have before. And it's just a more smooth sale yep. um and yes there's bumps and there's waves and all that stuff but it's not like insurmountable like it was before right and and then once you once you start really fixing problems then it just becomes another problem that you know you can totally fix right and it's less overwhelming right. like okay here's a problem let's fix it and it's not a big deal you know right so the, the fires become smaller just by virtue of of frame of mind and just the state that your team is in Right. Uh, you know, is this, and, and that's super important. It's like the state your team is in, like, do they feel good? Do they feel empowered? Yeah. Do they feel, are they overwhelmed by the quantity of things that are going on and they can't, right. because my team personally just, they shut down. They, they don't do well if they're like in overwhelm mode. Yeah. Um, sometimes I do over promise. It's like one of my things that I'm working on is like, don't just say yes to everything because remember Lynn, you still have to deliver on that. And you know, right. it's pushing them a little too beyond where they're comfortable. Um, and so there's, oh, we're still always navigating that, right? We're still navigating, like, what does that look like? What does that feel like? You know, right. all that kind of stuff. But what I've learned even during the pandemic is my girls need a lot of downtime because they start getting tired, mistakes get made, things get overwhelmed. I'm better off getting, you know, somebody either as a part-time contractor or, you know, just saying no to more things, even if we make a little bit less money, but at least yep. they're not like, oh my goodness, we're never going to get all this done. And then we're not feeling right. successful. And then it turns into that cycle. 
Right. Absolutely. Right. So, and I think, yeah. I guess, you know, maybe a couple final questions and we can wrap up, but maybe what's, what's like something that surprised you? Like when you jumped on board, obviously we just had a, a what, a 45 minute conversation at the outset, right? So even in all that, you can't really fully get a picture and an understanding of exactly what things are going to look like. So when you jumped in, what was like a surprise, like a pleasant surprise to you? I was like, oh, wow, this is great. Um, I just think like the insights are amazing. Like this, it's so easy. It's like, duh. Mm. It's really clear, really easy, very straightforward. And I think for me, that was that, that the solutions are not hard. They yeah. are just things that have to be tweaked and adjusted to make you better. And they save tons of time and they save money and they save aggravation and they save your, you know, um, yeah, you just, it, it's like, because you're reducing, reducing uncertainty in a certain amount, because being a business owner is full of uncertainty and you're taking some of that away. It allows your tolerance for like being open to new ideas, being open to improving all that stuff. Like it, because you're feeling better because you're, the ambiguity is taken away. Do you know what I mean? So I think like, for me, it's like, I feel empowered, um, on a level that I don't think that I, when I signed up for this, I was going to. Mm. Um, and I also think that I know that I have a resource um, that is invaluable because Tim has been so amazing at answering questions and coming up with such easy things that we can implement quickly that are game changers for us. Mm. And then my team is happy and I'm happy. And like, it's just, it's all like good vibes as opposed to like, right. Oh, we're so overwhelmed. And it's not to say that like, there aren't weeks where you're just like, shit, I have to do so much stuff to right. set all this up. But then like it's set up and then it just works. And then you're like, you know, it's, it's Tim's whole thing. It's like, slow down to speed up. And that's a new thing. And I say that to my girls a lot too. I'm like, girls, you know, like, for example, we do, we do this interview process and like whatever. And so I had the girls put together these little templates for, um, you know, for like our little trial runs. And I was like, do 10 of them. Like, let's slow down right now. Do 10 of these things so that like when we need them in three months or six months or whatever, they're ready and they're available for us. So we slow down so we could speed up. Like, or when we, we, we bulk things, like we don't just do like one set of samples. We used to just like stop everything and do one set of samples. Now we do like 10 sets of samples all at once. And yeah. like those kind of like bulking activities, like that's not something that I would have thought of before. Mm. Um, and so there's a lot of that kind of like those nuancey things that make a huge difference because it costs a lot more if I stop my team and make them do something as opposed to like, we're making 10 of something all at once. Yeah. We're making 50 of something all at once or whatever. Um, so yeah. So it costs money to work with us, but really if you are, have the inefficiencies and you're stressed and all this stuff is going on, you're absolutely paying for it anyway. <laughs> it's cheaper right. than an executive assistant. It's cheaper than um, an, a COO. Um, because you take out the, you, you put the systems in place so that you know, you become the CEO that you always wanted to be. Yeah. And then you know how to hold people accountable and they know how to hold themselves accountable, which is also huge. Mm. Um, and, and you, it also just makes it more fun. And it, I mean, it, it's been, to be very honest with you, it's been invalid. I have gotten way more money out of it in terms of my own mindset. Like, can we take this on? I mean, I've said yes to things that I probably wouldn't have said yes to yeah. even six months ago because I'm like, okay, we have the infrastructure in place to be able to deliver on this. As a marketer, I can say the sky is pink, but if the sky is blue, you're going to be like, well, you just said the sky was pink. So I can't say to people, I'm going to get you a moss wall in six weeks and I get that to them in eight weeks. They're going to be really pissed at me. You know, like, it's just yeah. like, no, you said six weeks. And so like, I need to know that I have the infrastructure behind me to be able to deliver on all those things. And we are building that infrastructure so that everybody feels empowered and it can move forward without me having to like freak out. Do we have the material? Do we have this? And there's probably even more stuff that I frankly need to outsource that I haven't done yet. Um, Get on it. And that, <laughs> you know, we're working on it. We're, we're always improving. You right. know what I mean? Right. Um, and, and Tim always has like really cool ways of like tweaking it so that he's like, no, let's do it this way. And then I'm like, that's exactly how I should do that. And those little tweaks over time make a massive difference in how much, like, I mean, 
just not having to order things, I probably saved myself 30 hours a month. I'm right. not even kidding you. Um, by just giving that to one of my girls who's right. sitting in the studio and knows what she needs versus what she doesn't need. So they don't have right. to ask them. They just tell me, hey, Linz, we need this. And I say, great, buy it. Um, right. And that's whatever. right. Like, take 30 hours all of a sudden that you have back in a month's time. What if you spend all that on sales? You know, right. and have the infrastructure to be able to then handle those sales. It's like, holy return on investment. Right. And that's, mm -hmm. and that's why, that's why the answer is not in doing more. It's actually in doing less. Right. That's why right. Tim's obsessed with that. Right. And make right. taking things off of your plate because I mean, it's, it's really a no brainer at that point. I mean, that was, and that was my experience with him too. It's like, Oh my gosh, if I just had five hours more a week just to dedicate to sales. You know, I got all these people that jump on board or talk, that I talked to on the calls that they're like, we can't even, I've got so many people calling. I have to turn people away. Like I have to, I can't even get through all the estimates. I don't, because I'm putting out all these fires and working with my team and blah, blah, blah. It's like five. What if you had five hours a week back in your pocket? And that's, that's actually really flipping easy to do. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's kind of crazy. Like, so five hours, like, whoa. And then you look around when you have that. Cause like sometimes we'll have like these little gaps of like a couple of hours and I'm like, what? Am I just like supposed to sit here? Like, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> right. I haven't had this in like years. Right. And right. I'm looking around like, is somebody going to know that like, I actually have a little bit of free time to like yeah. think about what I want to do. And like, and then usually like something comes up or whatever, but a couple times, like, especially during like, you know, sort of peak quarantine when things were really quiet, I was like, yeah. you know, because when you're a salesperson, like you want to be able to sell things and it was not the easiest for a few weeks there, but, right. um, the the thing was very it was very interesting to then be like okay well now i actually have like something i can focus on like i can start working on these systems you know it was just it was actually kind of fun for me because like i knew that i had this gap in time so i was like okay well i know that this is gonna pay off eventually so i gotta focus on this and i should have done right. more to be very honest with you i should have like tried to get through the program a little bit more because now we're back in like crazy sales time and i'm just like Ugh. yeah yeah, maybe like my last question for you then is just like, how, maybe how has it affected your personal life? Like outside of just running the business, how has it impacted and improved your, your personal life being able to, to work on these well, things? Think, you know, because my husband and I are both entrepreneurs, um, you know, a lot of it's been like, you know, and, and I've started to like have these conversations, like you should really like think about this in a different way. Like you don't necessarily need to be the one doing this. Um, my husband bought a business that had 12 employees and he was like the director of one of the technical teams. And so he had to learn kind of like how to be a CEO. And I think that's something also that like when you're a tradesperson, you know, when I was, Mo I mean, I didn't start the Moss business thinking, okay, I'm going to have six employees and have six, make six figures. Uh, well, the business makes six figures, you know, high six figures. I didn't right. think any of that stuff. I just thought I want to glue Moss on things. And then it turned into like, I need more infrastructure and then I need more infrastructure and then there's insurance and then there's taxes and then there's a, like all the 50,000 things that you have to do when you become a business owner that they don't tell you about because if they did, right. they wouldn't do it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's know? the truth. And so, <laughs> you know, so I just, you know, for me, I like, I wanted to create the environment I wanted to work in. The reason I, I have always been an entrepreneur is because part of me is a little bit insane. I love high growth. I love scrappy. I love you know, um, like thinking about like what's possible and growing something. I love the ownership part of it, even right. when it's scary and terrible. Right. Um, because there's part of me that just like loves having like my creating my own destiny. Like there's just something about that. That's not for everyone. And it's something that I've actually had to learn, you know, like there's people who really just do better as employees. I'm not one of those people. Right. So I think you know, my, with my husband, I think it's like, I've been trying to like share some of the tools um, I have been trying to, um, just have like a different mindset with him too. And like, well, did you think about it this way? And that, that kind of thing. And, um, also like, you know, thinking about life planning, like, what do we want our life to look like a little bit more? Like eventually we'd like to start traveling again. And what does that look like? And yeah. how do we get the team in place so that we're not chained? I mean, we went to Italy last year in September and I mean, I probably worked, I mean, I worked a lot while I was there. I mean, yeah. I, even, even while, you know, um, you know, handing a lot of stuff off to my team, but still yeah. it's just like, there was a lot of inquiries and other things that are coming in and they're just not set up for that. Right. So how do I put team, you know, long-term, how do I put people in place that, you know, I can replace myself with or who can take over for a week so I can actually go on vacation for real. Yeah. Um, and it's a very difficult switch in mindset in the sense of, and I like that whole, like going from owner to operator. 
and or from operator to owner sorry right yeah yeah that whole thing because for me it was like i wanted to look at it that way like if i own this thing what do i want to be doing what brings me joy what's happy what's great you know and then how do we get it so that it can really succeed with or without me right awesome yeah so it sounds like so it's like okay so instead of just being in survival mode and just being like the business is the center of the universe mm -hmm. and i have to just live each day to make sure it doesn't fall apart yeah exactly. actually bandwidth to be like oh i get to think about my future and and make sure that everything that's going on is aligned with what i'm actually building not just the business Does but the machine work for me or do i work for the machine and yeah. i think that like that's a transition that's very difficult to make for especially for a lot of small business owners because a lot right. of it's like feels like it's dependent on you yeah. Um, the people who make that transition, and it doesn't have to be like some huge infrastructure either. I mean, like people that are like big corporations, you can have like five people, seven people, 10 people working for you and have most of those day-to-day -day things kind of taken care of so that you can be thinking about like what you want to create and like what's fun for you and that kind of stuff. Yeah. And some people are really tactical and on the ground and other people really like sales like I do. But you just have to kind of like figure out like what it is that really like sparks joy and brings and then how do you get as much of that into your life as possible and how much you outsource every other aspect. Right. You know, it was very interesting. Like Tim was saying to me like, okay, so there, one of the interview questions is if you could do anything all day long, what would it be? And mine was very clearly sales. I love selling things. Love it. I'm a sicko. I'm like a crazy person. I love talking to people. I love telling them about what we're doing. I love that whole thing. Yeah. What do I hate doing? Insurance and shipping anything regarding shipping insurance you know like any document gathering documents i hate that shit excuse yeah. me french <laughs> and so for me it's like okay like i'm very clear on like what i like doing and what i don't like doing and like what my superpower is like yeah. i can you want a moss wall i think you need a moss wall you know what i mean and so <laughs> don't you feel like you need a moss wall there you go yeah, I mean, and so a moss for wall, me, like look really good here i mean there's already like some green what? stuff like it would be perfect. you need a moss wall back there it needs you to need say you know something you know <laughs> your thing about your what you're doing and what you're creating and whatever um i feel bad because i think pretty much every single time tim's like i want to get a moss wall. i'm like i'm ready let's go tim come on <laughs> so anyway so Impressive. um it would look good in his house it would look good in his house it would it would but anyway so we uh you know but the point is is that you know, for me, I just think like there's so many possibilities, you know, and so many opportunities in the world and all that kind of stuff. How right. do you figure out like, what it is that brings joy to you? What it, and not to say that you're going to get rid of everything, but you're going to get rid of a lot of things. And when you get rid of those lots of things, it's amazing how much your life opens up. And that's, if I can leave it with anything, your life will look better and it will feel better. And it doesn't take a long time and it's not that hard. And you have a very patient Canadian who will put up with a lot of things from these crazy Americans who are like, oh, you know, we need some socialized medicine. Whatever you guys have, the universal healthcare, we need some of that. Let me tell you, it'll be really helpful. But anyway, it's another conversation for later. Um, anything else that I can answer for you? No, I think that was, that was a great way to end. And, you know, it's okay. just, it, it has been seriously, it, I mean, like I said, our initial conversation was so much fun for me. And I did, I got off that call and was like, Tim, this woman is fantastic. Like she's gonna, she's like the Moss boss, and she's gonna crush it. Like she's gonna do great, and it's just so much fun to be part of that. You know, I've been a little bit more on the on the back lines, watching from from behind, but mm -hmm. it's been so fun to watch you just get engaged, and it's such a testament to, you know, the squeaky wheel gets the grease, right? Like if you get on calls and actually talk to Tim, like that's what we see. I, mean, I see it all the time. People that get on, even if it's just for 10 minutes once a week or twice or once every other week, like they, they get their problems solved. And it's, it's just so fun to watch you just learn and grow and implement these things and, and to hear now be able to have this conversation and, and hear mm -hmm. energy and, and see your trajectory. And I'm just super excited to see where you take well, it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And it's, it's been really fun and I'm just grateful. I mean, frankly, I'm really grateful. I mean, to think that like I would spend the kind of money that I did on this program after seeing like a bad, like an ugly ad on Facebook is like the most insane <laughs> thing ever. But again, like I think sometimes like, I don't know how Tim does his magical Facebook things. I think he does teach us that if we do some other stuff for him. But anyway, we, um, one of the things that I would say is that I have just been blown away by like how helpful that's been. And I'm not like, I'm very straight. Like if I don't like something, I won't, but I have right. screamed from the rooftops and I have other friends who are entrepreneurs and I have 
been like, you need to join this program. This is going to change the way you think about your business. And like, you know, but again, like not everybody's ready. You have to be like ready, willing, you know, have the money, you know, really prioritize the time also too to be like, I need to make this change because I don't want my life to feel like this anymore. And yeah. that, and, and it doesn't make sense to sign up for something unless you're really willing to do that. Absolutely. Because that's, it's, it, it's not like you can just show up. Like you have to do the exercise. Like Tim's not going to lift the weight for you. He's not going to come into my office and glue moss on things or help my girls glue moss more efficiently, but he's going right. to give me structures so that they feel like they can glue moss more efficiently and they can contribute more effectively and they can be part of something. Right. And it, no, it really is a game changer for all of us. And like I said, when the girls say, just ask Tim, like he knows <laughs> <laughs> that's enough. You know what I mean? So yeah. either way, if you don't have a mentor, like I don't have a, you know, a, a consistent mentor in my business right now. And so it's just really nice to have somebody who can say like, no, Lynn, you got to think about it this way or no, Lynn, you got to do it this way. And I know that when I do do those tweaks, it's 95% of the time makes an enormous difference in what we're doing and the other five percent like whatever stuff happens you know right. but like right. most of the time it's incredible so if someone's on the fence um th first of all they're welcome to reach out to me and ask me about the experience but i have had a very positive experience i've talked to some of the other people and like connect with them on facebook and it's been great because like we've just been able to like talk about issues and having the facebook group of people who are sort of in a similar boat um as we are and like i said we're on the small side like i invested in this just because i really felt very strongly that i wanted my life to look and feel differently but a lot of the people are like have 20 50 100 employees and right. they're dealing with the same stuff that i'm dealing with i'm so glad i have this now because even though it was a big expense in the long run it's like going to save me so much anxiety so much stress so much irritation by not having to like put things in place incorrectly and then you don't have those right. systems for when you do have 20 people or 50 people or, you know, whatever. Yes. Yeah. And then you're working like 200 hours a week somehow. <laughs> yeah. right. And there's, there's points, listen, when you're a startup, anyone who says that it's easy to be in a startup is lying to you. It is horrible for like three years. And then you get to a point right. where it's like a little bit less horrible, but, um, and you start making a little bit of money, but you know, sometimes I'm always like, I should just go get that big corporate sales job. I would crush right. it. It's fine. Right. You know, <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, no, this is what I signed up for. This is, you know, amazing and whatever. Right. But the, the, what I've seen is that like, you know, I do feel very empowered. I do feel like, you know, regardless of, you know, how long I stay involved with like all the day to day stuff with green wall escapes, like, you know, there's a way for me to get out of it where it's still going to be really successful. It's still going to generate money. It's still going to crush it. And then, you know, and I can start thinking about other things or I can just stay in this and like stay at it at a pace that feels good and feels uplifting and all that kind of stuff. And right. I'm having a lot of fun and my whole team, we're just, I love my girls. I love my team. I feel like we're just a lot more empowered and we have a, you know, we have the bandwidth to be able to do what we want to do. Right. It's cool. Well, Lindsay, why don't you take it away for us and just tell us how we can, how, how many people can find you? How can they get themselves a moss wall? Um, it's very easy. Um, there's, you can visit our website. It is green wall scapes, like landscapes, but wall, um, dot com. And also you can find us on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, Pinterest, Google, whatever. We are located in West Palm beach, Florida. You can also call us. Our phone number is 561-877-3100. Um, you can also email me at mossboss at greenwallscapes.com. Um, and that's it. Um, and we just, you know, we send lots of love, lots of greenery, a lot of mossomeness out into the universe. And hopefully <laughs> we can collaborate with you again. You know, like I said, this has been one of the best decisions I've ever made. Well, oh, thanks, Lindsay. It's been so much fun. and So much fun, yeah. always. Looking forward to... I love talking about myself. It's like my favorite activity. Right, no. right. <laughs> yes, yes. Energizing. Seriously, good luck with what you're doing next. And and as always, like all you got to do is reach out for help when you're stuck. And that's what I tell everybody. And it's still the same. We'll be, we'll be in your corner long term here. We're not going away, so... Thank you so much. It's been yeah. such a pleasure. Yeah, take care of yourself. Thanks. Check it out. Moss Boss. She is the boss. Seriously, check out those, check out the artwork that they make. It's fantastic. So thank you. Have the All best right. rest of your day. Bye. So we'll talk to you later.